Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here. So today, what we're gonna be going through is a little bit about Airflow's new dynamic task mapping um, and showing you how to put that into practice, actually sorting files within an S3 bucket um, based on some logic that basically saying, hey, do you have an integer or not? Um, simple stuff, but really shows you know, how Airflow is able to now take user-defined arguments and use them as a way to actually determine where a workflow will go from here. So you're no longer stuck with you know, just a linear workflow. You can actually have your pipelines uh, move dynamically through them based on conditions set by data. Um, and not just data, really anything can be used as a condition for this dynamic task mapping. Um, so only thing you need to do to you know, replicate this at home is have an S3 bucket. But even if you don't have an S3 bucket, the same concepts still hold. So you should be able to get some value out of this. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do, as we do with all of our DAGs, is first bring in our imports. Um, so a few ones we have here are you know, Airflow, Classic DAG, and XCOM arguments, which is gonna allow us to pass arguments through an XCOM. Um, task decorator, so we can use the new um, Airflow decorator, so we don't have to have all that boilerplate code for our tasks. Um, for date time, if you know what that is, date time. And then what we're having here is some providers that allow us to interact with S3 buckets in a certain way. So S3 list operator is gonna list out every, all the keys within a bucket, copy object, pretty much self-explanatory, as well as uh, S3 delete object. Um, and then we also have this S3 hook, which allows us to you know basically just hook in that S3 bucket and perform operations. Um, and we're also gonna import a logging uh, package as well, just so we can do some good old logging. So what we're gonna do next is actually put this logger into practice, as well as define our ingest and destination buckets. So this will make a little more sense in a second, but essentially what our first bucket is is where we're going to be ingesting our data before it's actually passed through um, our dynamic mapping DAG. It's gonna tell whether or not it has an integer in it. Um, our S3 integer bucket is gonna contain all of the data objects that have an integer in it. Um, and then S3 not integer is gonna be all the ones that don't. And those are gonna be our main two classifications here. So now that we've got our variable names defined, let's add that good old DAG boilerplate code. Um, so nothing really special here, pretty typical DAG uh, definition arguments. You know, we got our DAG ID, start date, schedule interval, catch up and markdown documentation, um, but nothing really out of the ordinary or that you need to worry about here. And so now that we've got our DAG set up, let us create our first task. So right here, this is our first task, which we're actually going to fetch a list of file names from that S3 ingestment bucket. So all this is doing is taking all the keys of the files within the S3 ingest bucket um, and appending them into a list. So you can see S3 list operators going to return a list of the files within that ingestion bucket. So now that we've got our first task, our second task is gonna look a little funkier. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through it real quick, make sure you guys understand everything that's happening here. Um, so first thing, at task decorator. So instead of you know adding this task definition, we can just do at task since this is essentially just a Python file. So you can decorate your Python um, tasks with the at task decorator instead of needing to use that uh, Python operator. Um, and so what we're going to be actually doing within this task is taking that source key list that S3 list operator generated. Um, and so what this is going to then do is fetch contents from all the files within that S3 bucket um, using our S3 hook. So that's going to use our connection ID that we'll set in the Airflow UI. Um, we're going to create an empty dictionary here for content list for all the content we're about to pull from these files. And then for every key, so every file name in that source key list that we got from the S3 list operator, um, read that key, take whatever content is stored under that key, um, and then append it to the content list dictionary. And then once we're all done with that, we've got a content list dictionary of all of our content from that S3 bucket. Uh, we can return that content list and move on to the next task. So now that we've defined that task, let's actually use it. So what we'll do here is define a content list that's going to call that function that we just created, reading the keys from the S3, um, and then pass it the XCOM, XCOM argument of the files in the ingest bucket. Um, so this is then going to create us the content list of all of the files um, within the ingest bucket. Um, so 
This is, you know, one of the other advantages of using the task decorator is you can really use your tasks more like traditional Python functions than just strictly in a task by task definition. Um, so just something I wanted to call out and I think it's kind of cool because I love Python. So now we're going to define our next task. So we got our content list and now we need to figure out, hey, how are we going to test all this content to see if it has an integer or not? So we're going to define another task. So again, using that task decorator. And so what we're doing here is taking that content list, it's being passed as an argument, um, and then creating a destination list, which is essentially a dictionary that's going to contain all of you know, the destinations for our content. Um, so now what we're going to test is for each file content in that content list we created of you know, all the information in our S3 bucket, um, we're going to say, hey, is instance file content integer? Um, and what this is doing is saying, hey, do we need to append this to the integer bucket or to the not integer bucket? Um, and what this is going to use is the file content um, and then say, hey, is it an integer? So all it's saying is, is file content integer um, with that if statement. So really simple stuff there. Um, and then based after you know we've appended to S3 or not integer bucket, um, we're then going to return that destination list that'll tell us where we're actually going to send our content to. You know, is it going to be that S3 integer bucket or the non-integer bucket? Um, so now that we've got our sorting task set up, let's actually pass it a content list and start sorting. So to actually put this to use, what we're going to do is, again, similar definition to our content list, where we're passing a list of those files in the ingest bucket. We're then going to here, taking that content list and then passing it through the test if integer task um, to then determine a destination key list. So this key list is essentially going to be a list of the S3 keys, so the S3 file names, and then an integer to determine, hey, is it going to the integer bucket or the non-integer bucket? Um, so it's gonna be a pair dictionary like that. So we can say, hey, which one is this going to? And then see you know, on a file by file basis where they're going to be appended. So now that we've gotten all that information together, we know where everything is going to be going. Let's generate those pairs I was talking about. Um, so here we are going to generate a new task again using the task decoration. And let's move that over to make sure we follow the good old indent rules. Um, sorry, one, two, three, four. Good old four spaces. Spaces, not tabs. Um, and so here we're going to define another task, generate source destination pair. So taking the source key list and the destination key list. Um, and then what this is going to do is each dictionary is going to contain the source and destination bucket keys. So the old bucket key from the ingestment bucket and then the new key that'll be used in the source bucket and the destination bucket. So what we can see here is we have this list of source destination pairs we're creating, which is contain what I just described. And then we have a for loop saying for source and destination um, in that zip file of our source key and destination key list um, append our source bucket key file URL. So you can see right here, this is what I'm talking, it's generating the file URLs we'll need to reference them in S3 when we actually move them from the source bucket to the destination bucket. Um, and then you also have your destination bucket key as well. So what this is basically doing is using Jinja templating to insert the names of each file or each destination um, and source bucket um, without needing to you know, define it explicitly. Um, you can kind of just import the variables and put it, push them into um, this list instead of needing to create a whole new file every time you're creating a new pairing. And so once we've got that all done, returning a list of source destination pairings, and then we can move on to the next task. All right, so now let's use that task we just created and actually generate our source destination pairings. Um, so we have, you know, as a com argument that's saying list of files in the ingest bucket, destination key list, we have all the relevant information we need to insert to generate those source and destination bucket keys. Um, and then now that we've got everything set up, we can actually get into the dynamic task mapping where we're going to say, hey, you're going to go to the integer bucket or the non-integer bucket. All right, now the coup de gras. So right here, we have our copy files. Um, task. And so what this is actually going to do is, and you can see this is kind of a weird task definition, um, and this is all you need now to implement the dynamic tasking, task mapping, is you have our S3 copy object operator dot partial. So this is telling us it's not the full arguments. We're going to need to pass that source destination dictionary to actually determine which files are going to be copied in S3. 
Uh, we have our task ID, copy files S3, AWS connection, and then the important part is .expand kwarks. So what this is doing is, unlike in a you know typical task definition, you wouldn't it's kit wargs for source destination pairs wouldn't be included. And so what this is doing is allowing us to say, hey, we're going to add this additional argument that's going to say exactly where your files are going to be going, so your source destination pairings. So this is feeding those source bucket keys and destination bucket keys into the S3 copy object operator only for integer objects. So this is saying, or only for non-integer objects. So because we've already set the source and bucket and destination bucket key, we don't need to actually determine which bucket they're going to go to in this copy object operator because it's already been predetermined. So then what this S3 copy object operator will do is create one task per file that it's sending um, to either the integer or non-integer bucket. Um, and so this is doing this all dynamically. You don't need to create you know, one task per file. Um, this will actually just create the amount of tasks you need for the amount of files you need to move. Um, and you don't need to do another check on whether it's an integer or not or build that into this. That's already been determined. And all you're doing is just passing the destinations in and then the S3 copy object operator is doing the rest. So really kind of simplifies being able to, you know, you set your logic for how you want to determine things or determine the source and destination. And then you can just pass that into a copy object operator. Whereas before, you know, you would have to hard code, hey, I want this many tasks to do it in parallel um, and basically do it that way versus now you can do it dynamically for, you know, right sides of exactly how many objects you're copying over. So really cool stuff. Um, you know, couldn't really do this before Airflow 2.0. 2.4 so you know this is really why I wanted to show this to you today and so now that we've got our content copied we have one more step so we're going to now set a delete operation for that ingest bucket so we really just want that ingest bucket to be you know an empty landing pad for us to send data to and then it's moved to the integer or non-integer bucket based on that um, and so we're going to delete any objects that are left over after that um, so we don't just have artifacts that we're then reparsing next time we run this DAG. Or if you know you're running out of schedule and you don't want to check, just making sure that's all cleared out. Um, and you can see we're again using a um, expanded uh, delete objects operator. So again, using dynamic mapping, where it's going to then create one file, delete it per each uh, or one task for each file that we're deleting. Um, so doing it dynamically instead of needing to pass a static list or anything like that. Um, and so one last thing we need to set here and that is just the only um, actual bit mapping we'll need to set is copy files s3 goes to delete content ingest bucket because neither of these were um, set to the task flow api which is how we set those task decorators so we'll need to define their flow um, explicitly whereas the others simply because you know they're passing data from one to another the task flow api will actually recognize that they're um, downstream of each other. So we don't need to set those definitions on our own. So that's it for this DAG. Uh, I really, really hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please send them over to me, send them a message. Um, and if you actually want to test this out yourself, see all the code I used, um, as well as some more examples of this, um, and see it in kind of a more dynamic way, uh, I put a link to the Astro registry below. And that is going to give you everything you need to know about this, so all the code, all the artifacts used, um, and show you how you can get it set up on your own machine. So thanks for tuning in, and have a good one. Bye.